How do you reverse a cross? Let's tie this drive band on the right way. You're going to need a drive band material and some scissors and of course, a spinning wheel. My wheel likes to use a crochet cotton thread on the thinner side. What's your favorite drive band material? Let me know down in the comments. If it's hard for you to reach around your spinning wheel while you're seated at the wheel, go ahead and put it up on a shelf or a table. Before attaching the drive band, we want the mother of all, or the flyer area, to be as close to the drive wheel as possible. Most wheels have a knob on the end of the table that controls this adjustment. For a clockwise Z twist, we are going to go around the drive wheel, around the bobbin, around the drive wheel, around the whirl. Wheel, bobbin, wheel, whirl. Wheel, bobbin, wheel, whirl. Now that's a clockwise twist. If you are going to be spinning in a counterclockwise twist, this is an S twist you will need to reverse the cross. And that means that when you tie on your drive band, you're going to go around the wheel, around the whirl, around the wheel, around the bobbin. Why does this matter? When you look at your drive band, you want it not to be rubbing on itself. And this is what they mean by reversing your cross. You want the cross to be free <laughs> where it is coming off of the drive wheel towards the flyer and the whirl. If your cross is doing this, that means that you installed it upside down and you need to go back and make sure that you are going around the flyer and bobbin in the right order before you're ready to spin. Otherwise, you will have headaches and your drive wheel will pop its band. Place your drive band material below the drive wheel. Bring the end of it between the supports under the wheel. And this is the important part. If you are spinning in a clockwise direction, that would be a Z twist, you want to first bring the drive band up and around the whirl on the bobbin. Bobbin first. Then we'll bring it over the top of the wheel and back down and around. For a clockwise Z twist, we are going to go next around the whirl. Now we'll bring it down over the top of the wheel and we're ready to tie it off. Do one final check to make sure that everything is aligned properly. And I like to bring the band back around to this point because it's easier to get to it to tie a knot. Just tie a simple square knot or whatever works for you. Some of the older antique wheels really like to have a spliced drive band, but if your wheel doesn't need to have a spliced drive band, it's not worth the time and effort. Check to see that your knot is secure and that it's not slipping. and trim off the excess. If your drive band material has a tendency to come apart at your knot, you can put a drip of fray check on there just to make sure it holds. Do not accidentally oil your wheel with fray check because they both have blue caps. Not that I know from experience or anything, but beware. I'm about to give you a bonus tip, but before we do that, Please, if you haven't, subscribe to my channel. I give lots and lots of spinning tips to help you spin your best yarn. And we have a weekly live podcast that you can join us for and chat. It's a lot of fun. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this tutorial. Thank you. And now for your bonus tip. I highly recommend periodically putting your wheel up into a different position, especially if you're doing the drive band, you can have a look at where the cross is. If you are spinning clockwise, it will be on the bottom. And this is a better view angle to see how that is operating. But the reason why I suggest putting your wheel up on a table or looking at it from a different direction, key here, while it's spinning, is because we get so used to looking at it from one direction, and that's all we know.
But if you start to look at your wheel to see and find where it has quirks and personality, if something does go wrong with it in the future and you have to troubleshoot a problem, it will be much easier to figure out what's going wrong if you know what it looks like when it's going right. If you would like to learn more about double drive spinning wheels, the mechanics, what the parts are called, all of these different things, I have a comprehensive tutorial that you can watch next. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time and happy spinning.